Good Friday afternoon. Uh, this is John again. Once again, playing a little Immaculate Grid, going for that rarity score. Um, had a uh, uh, miss yesterday. Um, turns out Barry Larkin did not hit 300 in his career. He played just a little too long, had a couple years, and uh, batting average fell below 300. So I missed yesterday's uh, Immaculate Grid. But, uh, you know, other than that, I had some pretty good picks and uh, looking looking to go into the weekend here pretty strong. Uh, or if nothing else, I do plan on watching a lot of baseball. Brewers are playing the Braves. Should be uh, should be an interesting series. Um, going to go ahead and just refresh and get right into it for this Friday afternoon edition of Immaculate Grid. All right. We got uh, 30 stolen base season as our statistical category today. Padres, we got the Cardinals, Rockies, Guardians, Diamondbacks. Um, cool. I can. I think I can uh, play with this a little bit. I think right off the bat, um, a good one here that uh, I thought of. Um, once again, Reggie Sanders is works in here quite a bit, but. Uh, I'm not going to put him for this one. I am going to put the very first ace of the Arizona Diamondbacks, not Randy Johnson, because he started with Diamondbacks in the 1999 season. But the 98 season, they had a gentleman known as Andy. I'll bet Microsoft Edge makes it easy for me to log in. Andy Bennis. He actually played, he would work here too. That's actually interesting because I could use Sanders or Bennis for either one. But I think I will use him here. 0.6% pictured with the San Diego Padres cap. So I'm uh, hitting all sorts of bases there. Uh, Padres and Diamondbacks. Steve Finley will work. Steve Finley will also work here. He actually works for the whole NL West. Fun fact. Steve Finley is a NL West cheat code. If you're uh, if you're ever interested, um, Reggie Sanders will also work for both the Diamondbacks and Padres. I think Orlando Hudson will work. Um, it's an interesting one. I think I'll go with Orlando Hudson. Actually, I think he. I think Reggie Sanders has has cultivated a little bit of a, a following in this game. 1%. All right. Yeah, Sanders might be better. Who knows? Uh, let's see. Cleveland and St. Louis. Um, probably a fair. I mean, they're both old teams. So you, you could go back quite a ways. Uh, Jake Westbrook on the more recent side is, is coming to mind. Um, you think of those late '90s uh, Cleveland teams. Um, a lot of talent there. I'm trying to think if anyone from the those talented squads ever made their way over to uh, over to St. Louis. Um, and no one is immediately springing to mind. Um, yeah, Alomar behind the plate at second base. Joey, Joey Cora, ever so briefly, Tony Fernandez would work. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, Joe Carter would work too. But I think Tony Fernandez is going to be more obscure. Everyone knows Tony Fernandez is a Blue Jay. Tony Fernandez was on uh, part of the trade that brought Joe Carter, who would also work here, uh, to Toronto. It was, uh, and Roberto Almar. It was Tony Fernandez and Fred McGriff for... Joe Carter and Roberto Almar blockbuster trade between the Blue Jays and the Padres. Of course, we're not talking about the Blue Jays. We are talking about the Padres. Um, but a number of people actually will work now that I'm, I'm, I'm putting them together for this one. Um, Carter works for that one. He started his career or he, he was with Cleveland um, in the, Late '80s had had a couple of really good seasons with Cleveland. Late '80s and was then part of that. Uh, well, part of a trade before that. Roberto Alomar would work here, um, but I think Tony Fernandez is more obscure. Tony Fernandez comes to Cleveland. He was on the '97 team. 
that went to the World Series. So I think I'm going to dial him in. Bip Roberts would also work for this one. He was also on that 97 Cleveland team. But I'll, I'll lock Tony Fernandez in. 0.5%. Quality player. Quality player. Did like three different stints with the, the Blue Jays. He was a, a Blue Jay tried and true. Um, all right. What if I just go with the cheat code for uh, Padres and Rockies? I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm circulating some Rockies in my head and just trying to think of if, if they ever made their way over to San Diego. You know, Bichette didn't, Vinny Castilla didn't, Larry Walker didn't, Todd Helton didn't, like Nephi Perez, Els Burks, Atkins, Hop. Hop might have actually, I'm trying to remember. But I think I'll just go with the cheat code. Let's see how popular Steve Finley has become as an NL West cheat code. Exceedingly popular. I mean, 3% is a pretty low number, but he was barely with the Colorado Rockies. But I think 3% of people are onto the same thing I am, that Steve Finley just works for every NL West team. Um, and so that leaves us with Colorado and St. Louis. Larry Walker does work there. He closed out his career with the Cardinals. Um, oh, actually, I think I have a better one. Arenado is going to obviously draw... I think the biggest numbers here, I think people are going to remember Larry Walker closed out his career. I mean, he was, you know, he's not known as a Cardinal, but he was on some very prominent Cardinals team. So he was in the postseason 0405 with the St. Louis Cardinals. I don't think, I don't think I want to mess with that, but Andre Scalaraga, very prominent Rocky, but he played for the Cardinals for a season. So I'm going to lock you in. Gets two percent. Okay, it's a little higher than I would have expected. But that's all right. Um, and then yeah, I keep uh, Jake Westbrook was the the person that really came to mind. Oh, I've got a better one. I I just thought of a better one. Um, is an individual that was started his career in the nineteen fifties, uh, with the Cleveland Indians, and he ended his career in the late nineteen sixties with the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, in between, he went to my dad's favorite team, uh, shown up there, Kansas City Athletics. Um, and then he did a little stint uh, with this uh, ragtag team in the Bronx, known as the Yankees, and hit 61 home runs in a season. I'm going with Roger Maris. And because, like, very beginning of his career with Cleveland, very end of his career with St. Louis. He's on uh, a a world championship and a pennant winning team with uh, with St. Louis. Like he's act, actually on those teams. So let's uh, dial that in. Ooh, went sub one percent on Roger Maris, pretty prominent player, feeling pretty good there. Uh, let's see, thirty stolen bases in a season. Um, there there are a number of right answers a lot of rockies went 30 30 um they include ellis burks donnie bichette and larry walker all went 30 30 um eric young uh senior was also on those teams in the 90s and he was definitely stealing over 30 bases um and then juan pierre was also a rocky before going to the marlins uh, I think Blackman will also work. But I think I'm going to... Donnie Bichette, like, I think people knew that Larry Walker was a very good base runner. Like, just part of his shtick was just being an all-around great player. Um, Ellis Burks was primarily a center fielder. I think there's a general feeling that he could run. Obviously, Juan Pierre could run. That's what Juan Pierre did. Uh, kind of ditto Eric Young Sr. Um... Donnie Bichette does not give the outward appearance of a man who steals a lot of bases, but it was, I think it was the 96 season. I think both him and Burks went 30-30. And given that he's contemporaries with both Walker and Burks and, yeah, Walker, Burks, and Young, I think he might get lost in the shuffle a little bit. Not going to go with Bo Bichette. Donnie Bichette. 
because 9%, that is so much higher than I would have thought. So I haven't had any like major duds, but 9% is pretty high. It's a lot higher than I was going to expect from Diane Bichette. I might have been better off actually going with Eric Young. Um, maybe people just don't, maybe people won't remember. I don't know if Pre Preston Wilson ever stole 30 bases in Colorado. I know he did with the Marlins. Interesting. All right. Uh, let's see. For players with Cleveland that stole over 30 bases, we can go back quite a ways. I think Kenny Lofton will do really well here. Fran uh, Francisco Lindor, I'm pretty sure, got there. Jose Ramirez definitely got there. Um, Roberto Alomar gets there. Omar Vizquel even was stealing 30 bases. It's nuts that people were running on the 90s uh, Cleveland Indians teams, given that they had, you know, so much uh, slugging power. Um, but indeed they did. I think I'm going to go just deeper. I'm just going to go older. I'm quite sure that Tris Speaker, who I used the other day, I'm sure he stole over 30 bases in a season with Cleveland. Goes under 1%. Okay. Um, And then that leaves the Diamondbacks. Um... Tony Womack definitely stole 30 bases for the Diamondbacks. Might be too obvious. Uh, Chris Young, I believe, stole 30 bases. I'm less sure of him. I'm very sure of Womack. I think Womack stole like 70 bases one year with uh, with the Diamondbacks. Um. But yeah, I'm not now. Now that I'm just like I'm, I'm kind of thinking of people with the Diamondbacks. Um, I don't know. I don't. I. I. Uh, maybe Eric Burns, but not sure. Maybe Justin Upton, but not sure. That's an interesting one. Womack, I think, will actually just do really well on this one. I think he'll he'll get high percentages. Chris Young, I'm not as sure about. I think he was, he was fast enough to do. I just don't know if he he actually got there. I know in his in the 07, whatever his rookie year was, Chris Young stole like went 2020 or something like that, but I don't know if that included 30 stolen bases. Um Let's see. Can I think of anyone else? There's probably more recent people. And again, I'm just, they're not springing to mind. Ooh. I'm pretty sure it's the one that whose career started in 06, but I'm not, I, I, I can't. I don't have quite enough confidence in either. If it was just the one Chris Young who played for the Diamondbacks, uh, or it was, and I was a hundred percent sure that he'd stolen thirty bases, I, I would have, I would have gone for it. But the fact that there's two, that means that I'm, I'm kind of taking a not a fifty-fifty. I think seventy thirty. I'm pretty sure it's the one that started in six, but those careers overlap too much. I'm just going with Womack. It'll probably be a pretty high score. Way high score, way high score. Womack was by far the most prevalent case. Um, yep. Uh, surprised that Donnie Bichette was. Oh, I would have gotten that one wrong. I did mention Eric Burns. I think I knew about this one. I did not know Goldschmidt got to 30. Not know Segura got to 30. Dyson does not surprise me. So, okay, Womack is like by far the biggest base dealer in 
Dimebacks history. I should have realized that was not going to be as obscure as I thought it'd be. How about uh, not these Rockies? I think I hit. Yep, Willie Tavares, Kaz Matsue was not going to get Willie Tavares. I think I could have could have recalled. Got Juan Pierre. Did not know Goodwin made his way over to Colorado, but I'm going to save him for later. He played for a bunch of teams. Eric Young, I mentioned, did it a few times. Diane Bichette does it once and, and gets on there. All right. Well, uh, this was fun, as always. Um, a quick plug is that um, it's right up here, but uh, uh, they're doing it with football reference now. So you can play... Um, just click on it. You can play uh, football reference. I don't know it nearly as well. So uh, I will not be making videos of trying to put together Browns and Jets and Bills and Lions because um, I uh, I don't think I would do particularly well there. Matthew Stafford would work, though. Bam, 64%. Anyway, I'm not going to play this one. It won't be entertaining. It'll just be me struggling. So, um. Uh, this was fun as always. And uh, once again, if you like this kind of banter, it's uh, brought to you by my book, Baseball's Most Fun Frivolities, which is on Amazon. I'll include a link in the description. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Peace.